Hello everyone, this is Dr. Akash Anand from the Department of uh, Civil Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Kolhapur. So in the previous uh, module, we have seen uh, what is a pavement, what are the various types, what are the various layers of a pavement and what are the functions of each of these layers. So today in the module 2, we are going to look into the various, uh, various important aspect that is ESWL, that is equivalent single wheel load then CBR test that is the California bearing ratio test and the factors that influence the pavement. So this is the topics, these are the topics that I will be covering in as a part of module 2. Now before going into the concept of ESWL we will look into the various conditions like whenever there is a higher load on the road so for in order to handle it it is very important to provide a uh, greater thickness for the layers of this pavement okay so what are the factors that we have to consider is what is the maximum wheel load what is the contact pressure and uh, wheel and the axle configuration and what is the repetition of wheel loads these are some factors that are required to be considered uh, while uh, calculating the ESWL Okay, then what should be the maximum legal axial load is 10.2 tons. The maximum wheel load should be 5.1 tons. Now, uh, for multi axial vehicles, the dual well assembly is provided in order to limit the load on a single wheel. So, therefore, we can define ESWL as a single wheel load replacement of a dual wheel load assembly, which will cause the same effect as that of the dual wheel assembly. Okay, so maximum ESWL as per the IRC that is Indian Roads Congress is 4085 kgs and it is determined based on uh, the condition of uh, either equal stress or equal deflection. Then uh, usually multiple wheel loads are converted into a equivalent single wheel load in order to be used for the pavement design. So here in this figure you can have a look at the dual wheel assembly which is shown here okay so this is the dual wheel assembly which can be seen here okay and uh, we can see the stress or the pressure it is uh, exerting on the pavement layer okay so we'll be looking into it in detail in the upcoming slides okay so here we have a descriptive definition of what is uh, ESWL. So, a load on a single tire that will cause an equal magnitude of the predefined parameters such as stress, strain and deflection at a particular location on the pavement system. Okay, that will result from a multiple wheel load at the same location within that pavement structure. So this is what we define it as equivalent single wheel load. Now based on this approach either the tire pressure or the contact area of the ESWL has to be equal to oh, that of the one tire of the multi gear assembly. Okay. Now in order to maintain the maximum wheel load within the specified limit and to carry the greater load it is, uh, it is desirable to provide a dual wheel assembly okay to the rear axles of the road vehicles now this does not mean that the impact on the pavement which will be due to the arrangement of this uh, wheel will have uh, will be twice as the load of a single wheel it won't be like that okay the point is that at a certain depth below the pavement surface the pressure cannot be obtained numerically okay just by adding the pressure caused by a single wheel load by one wheel load okay so that cannot be done so for that purpose what we do is we have to make certain assumptions like the load dispersion is acting at 45 degrees then the dual wheel uh, for the dual wheel assembly as it can be seen in this uh, figure that d that is here is the clear uh, gap between the two wheels okay while s is the center to center spacing fine and then a is the radius of circular contact okay you can okay 
and 2a is the diameter of the same. Now, based on this, we can calculate the value of s. Okay, so s is equal to, s is given by d plus 2a. Now, first we have to consider the depth of d by 2. Okay, so up to this depth, we can see that the load P is acting independently. For both the wheels, if we see, it is acting independently because till this point, there is no overlapping. There is no overlapping till this point, okay, which I have marked on this figure just now. Okay, and beyond this point, the stresses caused will be due to the loads due to this overlapping that will happen beyond the point uh, or beyond the depth of d by 2. Now, we have to see the depth 2s. Okay, now at the depth of 2s and above, the stresses are due to both the wheels since this area of overlap is increasing. Okay, it is quite significant. Okay, so it will be due to both the wheels. Now, therefore the total stress beyond the depth of 2s okay which is more than 2s which we have mentioned in the last point as well so therefore the total stress due to the wheel uh, dual wheels at any depth which is more than 2s as shown in this figure will be assumed as a single wheel load of a magnitude 2p now you have to remember this 2p is however more than the stress which would have been exerted due to the actual dual, dual wheel assembly okay now this is the graphical method for uh, finding out the equivalent single wheel load okay so in this we can see let us take delta as the maximum deflection at a particular depth z which is due to the dual wheel assembly and also we have to make an assumption that the depth is equal to the thickness of the pavement so as per the deflection criteria as we have discussed earlier there are two criteria that is the equal deflection and the equal stress so there are two criteria that we are going to see here first is the deflection criteria according to which ESWL is the single wheel load that has the same contact pressure which produces the same value of maximum deflection at depth z in a similar way in a stress criteria, the ESWL is the single wheel load that has the same contact pressure which produces the same value of maximum stress at depth Z. Now, we can see in this uh, log graph, okay, this is a log scale graph. Here you can see the depth on the X axis while the load on the Y axis. Now, the explanation of this one, you can see a straight line relationship. Okay, we can see a straight line relationship as shown in the uh, log log scales. The coordinates of A and B are known to us. Okay, line AB is a plot where any single wheel load is equal to the certain set of uh, dual wheel. Okay. Now, in order to calculate the ESWL, we have to see uh, that the pavement design thickness is essential. So, based on that only we can calculate the ESWL. So therefore, ESWL here will be obtained based on the assumed thickness which we will uh, consider based on this graph. And the same will be used for the design calculation. Now, if the design thickness which is obtained uh, here is same as the estimated thickness then the ESWL calculation which we have uh, which we have done are considered to be correct else different trials are required to be made okay in a similar way there is another approach that is Boyd and Foster method so based on that also the ESWL value can be calculated so this is an example uh, from the internet uh, where we have uh, considered a dual wheel assembly which is uh, shown here in the figure and the value of uh, other parameters are already provided and based on uh, Boyd and Foster method the ESWL came out to be 7400 pounds uh, while in case of uh, graphical method it, it comes out to be 7417 pounds so this is uh, you have to practice at home okay then we have the CBR 
value test that is the California bearing ratio test. So uh, it is a type of penetration test which is uh, performed in order to determine the strength of the subgrade or other flexible pavement materials as well in order to check its uh, suitability uh, for road and uh, pavement construction. Okay, So in this figure we can have a look at various uh, components of uh, this entire arrangement of the CBR uh, bearing ratio apparatus. So we have a mold okay we have a mold of uh, 150 mm diameter with a base plate okay that we can see here okay that is the base of the mold okay then we have the loading frame so this entire is the loading frame and this is the plunger uh, with the diameter of 50 mm then we have a dial gauge to measure the penetration and we have a proving ring to measure the load Okay, so dial gauge is basically used for uh, the de determination of the penetration values and the expansion of the soaking. The rate of penetration of the 50 mm dia cylindrical plunger, which is uh, shown here in the figure, uh, is 1.25 mm per minute. And the load values causing penetration uh, of 2.5 mm and 5 mm are actually noted. Now, these loads are reported in percentage of the standard load values of the respective deformation levels uh, in order to obtain the CBR values. Uh, then we have uh, the basic procedure here. So, the standard load values uh, that we have to consider for a large number of tests uh, is uh, 1370 kg for 2.5 mm penetration and 2055 kg for 5 mm penetration okay so the mold of uh, 150 mm dia with the base plate and a collar then we have the loading frame okay with the same details uh, these are the same details as we have seen earlier then what happens is uh, we come down to soaking of the specimen okay so specimen has to be soaked and we have to note down the swelling and the absorption values uh, after four days and the surcharge weight is placed as we can see in this figure the surcharge uh, weight is placed on the specimen this is our specimen and on the top of that we have uh, kept the surcharge weight here okay then the entire arrangement is placed under this plunger okay of the loading frame and then the load values uh, are noted for these penetrations ranging from uh, 0 0.0 to 12.5 mm penetration with the interval of 0.5 each okay so in that way we have to note down uh, like till 2.5 uh, you can have an interval of uh, 0.5 while uh, after that from 3 onwards we can start increasing our uh, interval of penetration. Now uh, there are two typical curves that are drawn based on uh, the CBR value test. Now there are two graphs which ca we can see in this uh, figure. Okay, So the one which comes earlier this one is for specimen 1 which does not uh, need any correction but when we look into the second one at the initial level itself this part we can see there is a concavity okay that means a correction has to be made to this particular curve okay now looking into the details of the same uh, the specimen with convexity that is the uh, for specimen 1 okay and specimen 2 with concavity it will require correction therefore what we do is we draw a tangent okay going from x to y okay so it is drawn from the steepest point x in order to make correction to the graph okay now the loads corresponding to the penetration has to be noted based on this graph while for specimen 2 it has to be noted based on the new origin which will be y okay so it has to be noted based on that new origin y now then comes the point why was there uh, this error or i should say why it required the correction 
because and what was the initial uh, what was the cause of the initial concavity of the load penetration curve okay so there are various reasons one of those is if in case the bottom surface of the plunger may not be exactly horizontal or maybe the top surface of the specimen might have the same issue therefore resulting in the plunger and the specimen not having a proper contact or full contact between them also the top layer of the specimen may be too soft or irregular so these are some uh, two to three reasons that uh, can be uh, that can be the reason uh, due to this initial concavity now next is how the cvr value is calculated okay so usually what happens the cbr value corresponding to the 2.5 mm penetration uh, is usually higher uh, than that one which is obtained for a 5 mm penetration hence uh, it is uh, reported whichever is higher however in uh, sometimes in cbr value corresponding to 5 mm penetration can also appear to be higher so uh, okay so then what has to be done is the test has to be repeated in order for uh, rechecking in a similar uh, if similar results are shown that again if we are getting higher values uh, obtained for the 5 mm penetration then the average of the three trials are to be considered as the cbr value of the material if the variation in the values obtained uh, for these three trials is more than the prescribed limits then another three trials are to be made okay another three trials have to be made and then the average of the six trials is noted down so previous three trials and the, these new three trials have to be noted down and uh, and usually this uh, test is performed for the materials that is passing through the 20 mm sieve uh, can be considered for this test next comes the various factors that influence the pavement so uh, these are some uh, problems that we will find in general with uh, whether it be a flexible pavement or rigid pavement so frost action is the one of the common issues that are faced so it is like uh, melting of ice crystals which uh, softens the road and uh, that's why it compromises with the load bearing capacity of the road uh, which is due to the voids formation and later on this uh, thing uh, this issue causes the deflection or the deformation of uh, uh, the road surface under the heavy load conditions then we have the temperature variance uh, sorry temperature variation so in this case uh, warping of uh, pavement happens this is usually happened uh, happens due to the temperature difference okay and uh, the stress is developed in the cement uh, concrete pavements and uh, in a similar manner in uh, similar conditions uh, the bituminous pavements uh, can become brittle especially in extremely cold weather condition and it can become extremely soft in case of extreme hot weather condition then we have the shape and surface characteristics so irregular or angular shaped uh, have better interlocking as we have discussed earlier and uh, so it is uh, recommended not to it is suggested not to uh, use avoid uh, use of uh, what we say it is suggested not to use the large boulders and uh, usually the well graded aggregate mix is used which is uh, much, which provides much better packing and it improves the load bearing capacity and stability of the pavement structure as well then we have uh, the drainage and environmental factors uh, that provides uh, protection from the frost action uh, that deals with the protection from the frost action the performance and service life, uh, life of uh, which depends on the drainage facilities and the land use embankment cutting water table depth and so on so thank you uh, so next uh, in the next uh, session we will look into the module 3 uh, where we will uh, discuss about the CBR design and uh, IRC method of uh, designing the flexible payments.